what is up guys welcome back to predator exotics now today we're going to be setting up this tank you see behind us so guys we're setting this up today for wedge snouted skinks uh, the latin name is chalcides sepsoides i believe um, we're going to set it up in a nice arid sort of environment it's got a sand soil mix um, but we're going to let well, you're going to see how we do it so yeah we're just going to get into this now and we're going to cut to when we first started setting up so today we have got the 60 wide by 45 deep by 30 high Exoterra. Already comes with the pre-done background, foam background, so we've got that already stuck in. Uh, we've taken the mesh top off for you and let's start adding our substrate in. So we're going to be starting off with a uh, mixture of substrates today. So we're going to have the uh, Arcadia Earth Mix Arid um, Soil. And then we're also going to have a mixture of the uh, Reptile Specific Desert Sand. We're going to put this more towards the basking spot. Uh, and then the soil more towards the uh, cool side of the tank. So we're not too sure about the mix we're going to do yet. Um, there's a lot of different uh, ways you can do this online. Uh, so I know Arcadia have kept them in the past. They kept them straight on the earth mix arid. Uh, I've seen a lot of people do a mix of soil and sand, which we're going to be doing today. And some people keep them on straight sand. But the thing is when you're adding this, uh, it actually allows them to create tunnels inside the substrate whereas the sand would just collapse pretty much straight away. Um, and you may be wondering why we have such massive bags for the size of the tank that we're actually doing. It's because we're going to be filling these tanks uh, quite thick with the uh, bottom layer of substrate, probably coming up to about the level of where the doors are, uh, so having about all of this full. Put this to one side. So we're going to start with half the bag of the Arcadia Earth Mix, just break up any of the bigger bits and then we'll add some sand on top, give it a mix, see what sort of ratio we're working with um, and we'll let you know what sort of consistency we're after. So we're trying to recreate the sandy soils in Northern Africa and the Middle East here. Um, so some parts would be straight sand dunes, whereas other parts where these skinks like to hang out is in the vegetation. Um, so the sand there will be a little bit more soily, um, so we're trying to recreate that as best as possible. So we're trying to fill up the whole of this bottom bit of glass here. So you can see it is requiring a lot of substrate, because um, these are partly fossorial, which means they live in the ground. So they're not just terrestrial, they do live under the ground, so you might not see them as much, um, but they will appreciate all this substrate. And now time to add the final bag of sand. So in total we've used 15 uh, kilograms of, what is it, 51 each bag? Is it 51? Um, yeah, each bag's 5 kilograms, but the first one had a little bit taken out because this is the same sand we use for our dwarf sand geckos. Um, so it's probably like 12 or 13 kilograms of sand. And the whole bag of Arca Arcadia is 10 litres, but we haven't used all of that just yet. So guys, we've finished our substrate, so we end up using the three bags of sand, which worked out about 12 or 13 kilograms. Um, we use maybe three quarters, almost all of the Arcadia Earth Mix Arid, and we've come up with this sort of consistency, which is a sandy soil. And what's great about it is, if you stick your finger in like that, it actually creates a tunnel that holds, it doesn't collapse, which is going to be great for this fossorial species to dig around inside the enclosure. So guys, now we're moving on to the next step, and the next step is to create some hides. Uh, we're going to start off with the basking spot, and in our basking spot we're going to be using rainbow slate. Uh, it's a bit different to what we usually use, but it's got some nice reds, looks very natural, is 100% natural as well. Um, and always when you're using slate, make sure you put it right to the bottom of the enclosure. This makes sure if they're digging inside the enclosure, the slate isn't going to collapse on them once they bury themselves under it. So we're going to dig a hole. Uh, play around with it a little and figure out what we're going to do make a nice little basking spot where the rocks will heat up and absorb the heat throughout the day and it'll actually release it overnight as well all right so if we uh yeah so we're doing it in the back right corner here so we have just secured the uh rocks in place now i know you can't really see them but we have a few of the rocks underground uh which has given them like little gaps for them to be able to dig and crawl under uh, we do have some of the other rocks, especially like this big one, but this one's going to be leaning up against a few of the other things we're going to be putting inside the enclosure. So this is all we've got for now. 
Um, but as you can see, there are the rocks underneath there as well, uh, giving a nice structural support uh, for their basking spot. So guys, now we're going to add in some more decor. So we've got this nice exoterra branch. We've got some nice gnarly bits on it which make it look really naturalistic. Got quite a nice piece um, and we're going to put this in the enclosure. Um, these sort of prongs will be underground which means the skinks can go around and hide in them. Um, they sh I'm expecting not to climb on the branch because they are mostly fossorial. But we'll just see, that's the beauty of these things, you get to see them, watch them explore. Um, and watch them see what they do in their new environment. Uh, so we know you can't really see it in the camera angle. Uh, you'll be able to see it when we give you a full showdown of the actual tank once it's finished. Uh, but we do have the rock lying this way, uh, which will give them a nice spot to lie on and absorb all that heat that they need. So guys, because we're trying to recreate it most naturally as possible, um, we thought what goes on, what sort of vegetation do they have in the sand dunes in Northern Africa and the Middle East. So what we went for, this is Exoterra's turtle grass. Um, it's just sort of like a, it's supposed to be for aquatic stuff I think, um, and it's supposed to come out of the water. But we're going to bury this bottom bit and it's going to be sprouting out of the sand dunes, which is going to look nice and naturalistic. And this is where these skinks naturally live. Um, al along the sort of root systems of the, the brush and stuff like that. So we have used this uh, kind of fake plant before. Uh, we have it in our bearded dragon enclosure. I think it looks really nice uh, and gives kind of like a deserty vibe. Uh, not too much foliage if, uh, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, are we positioning it towards the back or are we yeah. doing one at the front one at the back? Um, no, I was going to do, so if you do I'll, do... I'll bury this one in there. Bury that one in there. And then with this one, uh, with these, there's actually sort of a split. It's like two different plants. Um, so we're going to put it underneath this rock, um, this log and have it sort of coming out either side, which is going to look really cool. Looks like it's grown into the tank. So as you can see, if the camera picks up well enough, if not, of course, you will see it at the end. Uh, it does give that nice look of growing around the log. And of course, you've got this nice one in the back that kind of, you know, cascades over the uh, basking spot as well not too many just a few which gives it that nice look so guys now we're moving on to the next step we're starting to get there now um, this is a fossorial species so technically the substrate acts as its own hide um, and we've got the hides the hot hides with the slate and stuff but we have got a couple more hides so this, i think this is the exoterra small um, from one of their ranges and this is an exoterra medium i believe from a different range so you can see the different style. This is more of a, a rocky one, um, and this one is quite smooth. Um, but they've both got a small little entrance. But that won't really matter, to be honest, because they're more likely to go underneath and then pop up in the little air pocket that we have there. All right. So you can see with this first one, we've buried it slightly, so it looks like a rock coming out of the ground. So it makes it look more naturalistic and just plonking it on the surface. And with this smaller one, um, this is going to be sort of on the cool side. So these, this one's going to warm up the most, this one's going to be sort of warming up a little bit, then this one in the cold side. So next up we're going to be adding in the water bowl. Now this is a Pets at Home water bowl. As you can see it looks nice and natural uh, with its rocky effect. Now of course Pets at Home I believe is uh, just in the UK, so you guys might not have access to this kind of brand. But as you can see it turns out really nice uh, and I do prefer it to some of the other water bowls that uh, other brands do give. Now, even though this is a desert species, we do still have to provide them with fresh water. So yeah, um, this, this species will appreciate more humidity than just a normal desert species. Because it's a fossorial species, um, it will, the, the humidity will be trapped underground, so sort of like a 50 to maybe 70%. Um, we'll have to do a little bit more research, speak them into shop um, and see what humidity they are providing. So we've got a few bit, bits of leftover rainbow slate from our pack. We bought a three kilogram lot of the rainbow slate um, and it came a variety of different sizes. We used the big pieces for the basking spot, um, but we're going to use these sort of dotted around the enclosure for a little bit more enrichment. So they're going to have to move around it when they're hunting for crickets and stuff like that. Um, and it's also going to fill this sort of slightly emptier space we've got in the middle. So yeah, we're just going to like scatter them around, I guess. Yeah, so I think... So guys, we just dotted them around the enclosure. So we've got a couple here, a couple there, uh, one along the side near the sort of basking area. And you don't have to worry about them crushing like we did before. 
So obviously these bits are very heavy, so we've supported them to the bottom. These are just little light bits, um, so they'll dig under them. They'll be fine. We're not we're not at risk in, we're not at risk of them getting crushed by these just small little bits. So now that we've done kind of all the decor inside the enclosure, it's time to add in the stuff that helps us uh, keep track of how the temperatures and all that are doing. Uh, so of course we've got the Exoterra thermometer and a hydrometer, um, which we have used in pretty much all of our tanks at this point. Uh, so we are very happy with these. Uh, now we're just going to be sticking them on the side of the enclosure. Uh, you probably have noticed at the front we have a Komodo one. Uh, we bought this off Facebook Marketplace and of course it did come with this. Uh, we didn't want to take it off just because it left, uh, it would leave like a bit of a smudge mark from where it's been stuck on. So we're just going to leave it on the front. We're not sure why he had it on the front of the tank. Yeah, the, the outside is really not going to tell you anything. Um, <laughs> so it, it's pretty much like that's just going to measure the air temperature around the tank. Uh, we want to make sure the temperature inside the tank is all, all okay. So basically, because we've got our temperature probe that's going to be under the hot spot, we know what temperature this is going to be all the time. So we're going to put our dials over on this, the cool side. Um, the hydrometer is going to be slightly further back, so it's not directly above the water bowl, because that would sort of, um, it would just defeat the purpose of putting it in there, because as the water evaporates out of the water bowl, it's going to go straight over the hydrometer, and you're not going to get an accurate reading of what the, the general tank is. So we've got our thermometer here, uh, they come with just like sticky pads, um, so you peel it off the back um, and it's a sticky one, put it on the side of the tank and got to make sure it's straight otherwise I'm going to get my OCD all mixed up. <laughs> I've got a hydrometer as well so a bit further away from the water bowl with this one. So that's all good, so we'll obviously have our probe and that for this side and then our cool side we can measure the temperature and humidity. Um, so speaking of probe, uh, that's the next thing we're going to be adding in to the enclosure. Now, of course, we're going with a Haverstat. Um, if you guys have seen any of our other videos, you know that we use Haverstat on pretty much all of our enclosures. Uh, just a reliable brand, and uh, we've always been really happy with their results. Yeah, so this is the digital dimming one. Um, so this is the best one you can get, and I think it's a lot better than all the other ones. Um, so basically, we're going to get this all out of the box, um, probably stick it to the front set our temperatures um, so we'll unbox it and show you how we're going to put it in the tank so guys we're going to put our probe in now um, usually we would put it down the back of the um, the foam background or cut a little hole um, but the previous owner cut a little hole in the mesh so we're just going to use that um, save us a little bit of time we'll just put it through there so if we slot it through that little hole so you can't really see it at the moment but we'll show you in a minute um, what we actually did was sort of put it through this plant at the back um, into sand and up through the basking spot and then we took a few rocks from the front um, and secured it so it's hidden but it's actually going to be right underneath that light giving us an accurate reading of how hot that basking spot is. So we've got our sticky, sticky velcro on the back. Um, we're going to put this on the side of the tank. Um, don't pay attention to any of the dials we haven't done. Uh, we haven't set all the different stuff we want to at the moment and um, we're just going to stick it on the front so we've got a nice accurate and easy to read spot for our basking spot. Uh, so now that we've installed all of our temperature probes we're actually going to be installing what's going to be giving off our heat so this is going to be our basking spot what for the dome we've got the exoterra small dome um, as you can see and we're just going to be sitting it on the mesh at the back here and for the bulb, we've chosen to go with Arcadia because we believe Arcadia is the best brand for lighting. Um, and this is a 75 watt. Uh, I believe they use a 75 watt in the shop. Um, but we're going to monitor the temperatures, make sure it's all okay, make sure that hotspot is reaching the required temperature. If not, we'll either up the wattage or lower the wattage depending on how it's working out for us. And a nice handy tip as well. Um, on the back of your Arcadia bulbs, actually gives you a little little chart um, so depending on how far away your bulb is from your hotspot it will tell you a sort of estimated temperature that it's going to do God damn alarm. turn off that alarm <laughs> how did it so we have just installed our uh, basking spotlight. Uh, now don't worry about the red light. It does give off a cool effect, but it is going to be counteracted with our actual UVB bulb that we're going to be lying on the top as well. Um, 
and it's nicely placed just above these rocks. Um, so these rocks are going to absorb all the heat um, and then radiate it outwards throughout the day and over the night period as well. So guys, now we're moving on to our UVB lighting. Um, so these do require it with a high UVB level. So we've chosen Arcadia because we think Arcadia is the best. Um, and this is the 24 watt. I believe it's about 22 inches long. So it fits on this 24 inch long uh, terrarium very nicely. And this is Pro T5 which is the brightest one you can get. It's better than the T8s, which are a little bit duller and a lot better than the compact bulbs. And we've chosen to go for 12% UVB. This is to recreate the desert environment of North Africa and the Middle East. Um, they might not necessarily um, need it this high because they are fossorial, so they might not be exposed to the light all day, um, but it's better to have a higher UVB output. Um, and I believe they will appreciate it and be more active as a result. So this is what it looks like. It looks like most other um, Arcadia bulbs that we've bought in the past. I don't know how you want to level it on because it's just... Can it go in either side or is this the extension? So we've just plugged in our Arcadia 12% UVB T5 bulb. Um, it sort of rests on the sides. Um, so you can have it up or we're going to tilt it. So it's going slightly in. Um, so it's going to light up this front bit and the back bit's going to stay a little bit darker. So we're just going to have a final uh, kind of shift around with the tank to make sure everything's in place on how we want it. Uh, and then we'll show you guys the end result. So you've just seen the final result of our wedge snouted skink setup. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. hope it gives you some ideas if you're keeping a similar species as well. Yeah, I think the tank actually turned out really well. Uh, we're both really happy with um, the end result. And as you guys saw, yeah, you just saw the uh, scenic shots of all the kind of like different areas that the camera isn't able to pick up. So we're actually going to be picking these guys up tomorrow. We're going down to KBN Reptiles in Coventry to pick up four of these guys. They're letting us film in the store, so we're going to show you all around their store. And it's a really good store. They've given us a lot of good information on how to set this up as well. Um, so I hope you enjoyed all of that. So guys, we hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe to Project Exotics. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.